What's going on guys? Today we are out here at Ron Hoover RV and Marine in Corpus Christi. We are gonna take a look at this really cool Flagstaff Super Light Travel Trailer. This is a brand that a lot of people respect because Flagstaff is kind of known in the industry to make a better brand because Flagstaff is kind of known in the industry to make a better unit. A lot of perks behind their construction as well as how they set their units up in general. So hang tight, I'll be right back. All right, before we kick it off too far, let's take a look at the numbers on this unit. So this unit has a gross vehicle weight rating of 8,596 pounds. It has a cargo capacity of 1,693 pounds, and it rides on twin 3,900 pound axles. So this specific unit, in my opinion, is definitely three quarter ton towable. I wouldn't put this behind a half ton truck. There are certain half ton configurations that could probably tow this, but then again, I like to be very conservative in terms of my numbers and just be very clear with what I recommend in terms of the safest, most stress-free towing experience. That out of the way, you can see it has twin propane cans up front, electric front tongue jack. This actually has a dual battery box already installed in it. Very nice. A lot of units only come with one battery. This one gives you the ability to have two. You have the LCI electric stabilization system up front. This is a rack and pinion slide right here. Coming around, this one must have sustained some type of damage in route because they have some tape holding the window shut. That is likely something that happened while it was, you know, traveling down the road. It just looks like it's holding the window in, so there's probably just a clip inside there that needs to be replaced. Definitely something they take care of during your PDI. This unit has Goodyear Endurance tires. Another nice perk of these flagstaffs is the fact that they have torsion axles. So this is a torsion suspension system. I also like the fact that this is your sewer connection right here, one of them. You have gate valves right at the end of it, so you don't have to worry about stuff building up inside of your pipes. I made a video on that and adding the Valtura end cap kind of uh, gate to prevent stuff, again, from building up inside. So whenever you release it, stuff comes flying out whenever you get to your campground. And you can also see the gate valve up there at the very end of the connection. Again, I love it when manufacturers are thoughtful and they put things like that in place. Very nice. Plus the fact that they're using the higher end Goodyear Endurance tire with torsion suspension. These are all indications that you're getting a coach that is very much tailored for a buyer. One that's designed with a few extra things in mind to give you a better experience. Right here you can see rack and pinion slide on this back slide. There's your other electric stabilization. And this unit rides on an 8 inch I-beam frame. But real quick you can see how they reinforce the frame underneath to support the Torflex suspension from Dexter. You have storage here. This is likely going to be under your bed. It's actually a good amount of storage as well. Nice thick baggage doors. That is a great perk. Nice slam latch. Some things you might not see on travel trailers. You know, it's good when you see things like that. This is kind of cool. You see how the spare tires on these trailers aren't covered or protected, but this one has a really nice plastic housing that protects it from UV and sun just destroying it on the back of the trailer. Right here, you have your 50 amp connection. All LED lighting, LED lighting up top, and it is wired for a Furion wireless backup camera. This is also kind of interesting, the fact that they put all your connections here on the back of the RV and they put a light back here so you can actually see what's going on at night. I almost feel as if I'm the one that spurred all these manufacturers to start putting lights near their connection panels. I brought this up almost a year and a half ago in a video when nobody was doing it and I said, you know what, this is something that just needs to be added as standard on all RVs. And you're starting to see more and more RV manufacturers integrating lighting around the actual connection panel because a lot of folks go out at night because they have to do something and when you have no light back here it's kind of dangerous at the same time you have to bring a light with you and this is just so much more convenient has a full walk-on roof with ladder already installed some travel trailers don't do that nice bumper already installed here as well and a two inch receiver this is not designed to haul a trailer that is designed for an accessory rack you have an outside shower right here. This is also nice, especially if you're gonna be cleaning out your hose or anything like that whenever you're about to leave. This is your water fill. And right here is how you would extend or retract your stabilization system. You can see this has an enormous awning that runs down the side. 
Something else that's really nice is that they give you two of the Moride step above steps instead of one and then kind of the cheaper steel step like you see on that unit right over there. That's typically what you see on a lot of units. They already have the tire pressure monitoring system installed on this. You can see where it has the Torflex suspension from Dexter. You have your outside plug cable connection, place to mount a TV, and then you have your speakers as well. This is going to be the back of your gas electric refrigerator, the other portions on top. This is a better way to install it as opposed to putting into a slide where you have both vents on the side here, mainly because you get more air circulation, the hot air rises, and it makes the refrigerator work a little bit more effectively. Back your furnace, back your water heater. This is some storage, as well as some of your manual cranks right there. And you can see there's obviously a kitchen inside of here. You have just enough room in here to put like some chairs, maybe a small folding table. And then you have that little table right here for a grill, which mounts to the side over here. But this is nice because nothing actually, you know, has to worry about hitting plumbing or anything like that. Nice thick door with slam latch. Let's step inside of this Flagstaff 26 FKBS front kitchen unit. You're starting to see the entire industry move away from the older style doors with the latch on the back to these friction hinge style doors, which is really cool. And this also has this new LCI screenshot. This is essentially a way of the screen door closing whenever it's disconnected from the main door. So if I disconnect it here, it's basically a strap that closes the screen door so it's not just hanging in the wind like they used to. It's very cool. Something else that's also neat, let me open this up real quick is the fact that they put a blind right here privacy shade to be able to cover up your window which is really nice because oftentimes a lot of folks have to kind of cover this up themselves and you don't have access to your windows easy so whenever somebody's outside you really can't see what's going on with this it's really cool that they integrate it into the door automatically Stepping inside, you have your control panel directly here to your right. You have your AC controls right here. All of your slides, awning retract, water tanks. Everything is right here, all of your lighting. Coming around, quickly kind of pan around the kitchen here so you can see what's going on. This is a front kitchen unit with a cornered sink. You have a nice freestanding dinette with the four chairs already out. I always like it when they put the four chairs already out and you don't have to dig for two of the chairs under the bed or in a closet. Nice sofa here, and you can see that there are electric controls at the end to help it recline. So this is a really, really nice setup. Now this isn't going to convert into a bed, so keep that in mind. So you're going to be kind of limited in terms of the total number of people you can sleep in this unit. But what is nice is if you have some kiddos that are coming with you, you have a huge area right here. You could easily put like an air mattress or a couple of sleeping bags. This is an area that you could absolutely take advantage of for additional sleeping space if you have people coming with you. You have your Coleman mock air conditioning system here, as well as your Dometic gas electric refrigerator with wood paneling on the door. And this is a pretty good size unit. It looks to be a 9 or a 10 cubic foot unit. This is the same size that we had in our Chaparral fifth wheel. You have a Magic Chef micro microwave, three burner gas cooktop, stainless steel dual basin sink and a very nice faucet up here which appears to be stainless steel so this is interesting so you have this um, accordion style blind up here however on these windows it is a day night roller shade which i prefer because this can black out the interior the problem is is you can black them out from this side you just can't do it from this side so i would have advised that they put one of these dark out blinds on the front as well and real quick, let's stop at the price. This is a 2021 Flagstaff 26 FKBS, has an MSRP of 44,763 and a sale price of 34,999. In my opinion, that's not a bad price for a unit like this. Let's come back around this way. Looks like you have some storage right here. This is actually your pantry area, lots of shelves. And if it's too much pantry space for you and you don't need it, there are some coat hangers right there as well. And it's relatively deep, looks to be about 10 inches deep, maybe even a little bit deeper. You have your entertainment system right here, little fireplace up front, very clean setup. That's something that Flagstaff is also known for, making very, very good use of space. Let's look in the bathroom area right here. 
That's a very, very small gap right there. Check that out. That is maybe, maybe an eighth of an inch. You can move the TV out of the way. It's on a little swivel, but man, they, they cut that really close. Coming into the restroom has a freestanding shower. This is the Aquaview Shower Miser. You have some more storage here for towels and linens and toilet paper and whatever you might need. I don't see a toilet paper holder on this specific wall or in the bathroom, so that's kind of interesting. I really don't know where you would put it, but that's a very, very interesting thing. Where do you put your toilet paper roll? This is your vanity area. Uh, they used a relatively large basin sink. I kind of would have preferred something a little smaller. That way you would have had more practical use of space around it. it has a nice little medicine cabinet in here. In terms of ceiling height, you could probably be upwards of about six foot five, six foot six, and comfortably fit in the shower. Now, in terms of the bathroom area itself, you could be upwards of seven foot tall. The reason I say that is because the shower is slightly elevated off of the floor. Now, stepping into the bedroom, this has a queen size bed already installed, but it would appear that you could put a king size bed in here because the nightstands allow the mattress to be in slightly, which means if you didn't have those nightstands, you could probably put a king size bed in here, which would be nice. You have your second Coleman mock air conditioning system in here. Some cabinets up top. You have a large window right here. You have your second entry right here and lots of wardrobe space. So plenty of wardrobe space for or what you might bring in terms of hanging clothes and stuff. This is not prepped for a washer and dryer. So this is absolutely just for wardrobe space. You have some very large drawers here, and then you have an access panel right there, which is probably to access all your plumbing and stuff that comes in from the outside. This bed, I'm sure, lifts up to give you access to that space that we see underneath. And it's really nice how they've laid this out. So that is the storage hatch you saw from the outside of this unit. And these are two drawers that you can pull out from the inside of the unit. So you can load it up with stuff right there and then you can also access stuff from the inside without having to kind of reach under or lift up the bed every time. I also like how they framed the bed out with aluminum rails. So this is very unique. A lot of manufacturers you'll see when you lift the bed, it's all wood framed and the bed doesn't have much support. But you'll see with Flagstaff how they've done things a little bit different, and they've actually given you this really nice robust framing system for the bed, along with struts. All right, so working our way back out into the main living area again, this is a really cool kind of compact travel trailer. It's going to be roughly 32 feet long. It's not terribly long, but it, again, it's not super compact. It's relatively heavy for its size. Definitely something I would say is three quarter ton towable. I really wouldn't recommend putting this behind a half ton truck. It's got a lot of really practical space and they've done a really good job if you're gonna be a couple traveling around with something like this. Again, I love the suspension. I love the tires. I love what they've done with the chassis of this unit. They do a really good job and Flagstaff is kind of known for that. Anyways, guys, I sure hope you enjoyed this video. If you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up, and we'll talk to you again very soon.